Will it ever be possible for us as humans to regrow a lost tooth? Or are we just stuck with implants and bridges forever? Tooth regeneration is officially entering phase one clinical trials in Japan. That means they'll be testing out their new therapy on healthy adults who have lost a tooth, primarily to see whether or not it's safe. If it does work, this drug is initially going to be marketed for children with congenital tooth deficiency, meaning that they just weren't able to grow permanent teeth. Maybe it was just one tooth that failed to develop, but it can actually be more than that. So in the more severe forms, it can be six or more. But it's pretty obvious that this drug could eventually be highly coveted by a variety of demographics. If successful, it could be available as early as five years from now. Five years, at least according to the research team. So how are they doing it? They're literally just blocking a molecular interaction that's happening in the tissue to keep your tooth bud asleep or quiescent. No fancy stem cells, no tissue transplants, just an antibody called anti-USAG1. Now antibodies come up a lot when we're talking about your immune system, right? They're like little flags that get planted on foreign particles like viruses or bacteria so that your immune cells can recognize those foreign particles and destroy them. But they can also be used to disrupt an interaction between two molecules because they're so good at sticking to the places that you design them to and getting in the way, disrupting that interaction. Now this could be really cool if it works. The data in animals so far has been highly compelling. They've mostly been doing it in mice and in ferrets. And with ferrets specifically, that's an important model system because their dental patterns are so similar to human dental patterns, believe it or not. Still, I feel like it's important to temper expectations here, okay? We're only in phase one, and 90% of drugs developed flop out of clinical trials in the first place. So margin for failure here is wide, to say the least. And there are lots of questions that we still wanna ask. So the replacement tooth that comes in, is it going to look like the original tooth that was lost or? You know, is it gonna be a little bit wonky? We don't know. But how long would it take to grow a human tooth as an adult? We definitely can't count on previous animal experiments for preview because developmental timelines for animals are so different than they are for humans. By the time you're even born at 40 weeks, mice are already pushing the middle age bracket. And I'm not even exaggerating. This is a new frontier. The adult human body is in a totally different state of existence than a child's body as it's growing and developing. So who knows? I don't think anybody could really tell you for sure and that's you know part of what we're gonna find out with this clinical trial and then there's a question that I get pretty much every time I tell this story to somebody else which is they're giving this drug systemically so they're just injecting it into a vein it goes all over your body am I then going to grow teeth in random places no Okay, that's, that's not how this works. You have tooth buds in your mouth, and so the drug is going to act on those tooth buds to grow teeth. That does not mean it's going to grow teeth in places where you don't originally have tooth buds. What the drug does depends on the part of the body that it's in. Now on that note, USAG1 is a protein that has other functions in other parts of the body. Your body really likes to recycle chemicals and proteins because it's just more efficient that way. So it'll have one function in the mouth and a completely different function in the kidney. One well-known example of this would be dopamine. Dopamine comes up a lot in addiction contexts, but it also comes up a lot in the context of movement disorders. So it just, it depends on the part of the brain that you're studying. That being said, in terms of side effects, I would be less worried about sprouting teeth in parts of the body that aren't your mouth than I would be interfering with USAG1's normal function in places like the kidney. Still, I think systemic administration for congenital tooth deficiency makes sense. The reason being, we're talking about children here, this would require a large amount of localized injections in the mouth. That doesn't sound like it would be super well tolerated to me. Those injections could also be mislocalized. What if you miss an important area that you were supposed to inject, but that you ultimately didn't? With systemic administration, you're getting that drug into the bloodstream and the blood is carrying it rather evenly throughout all the tissues in the mouth. I think if this drug is successful, and again, that is, that's a big if, 
in future, when we start to think about other demographics, they might move into more localized injections rather than systemic administration. For instance, imagine someone who, as a child, experienced tooth overcrowding, where they had to intentionally pull out multiple teeth to make sure that the remaining teeth were able to fit into the jaw comfortably. Fast forward a few years, maybe now they've lost a tooth involuntarily and they need it replaced. Systemic administration would potentially mean growing back more teeth than they wanted to grow back. So in a scenario like that, reactivating all of the tooth buds in the mouth would do more harm than good. And I imagine you would probably also need a much higher dose than with a localized injection too. So that's something to think about. I'm sure if things do work out with this drug, it'll be sold with different potential routes of administration and at different dosages. Okay, you are now up to date on tooth regeneration. So if you learned something, share this video with a friend.